Hi and welcome to a new video and my channel. And if you are into watch related content, please subscribe. So thank you. Today on the detailed how to tutorial video, we have the G-Shock GA110. So let's get started. To make, sti to make things easier for you, you can jump to the steps of the video using the description. So uh, first of all, let me run you through the modes of the watch and that's done by pressing the mode button over here. So first in a row is a stopwatch. You have your countdown timer, you have your wall time mode, you have your alarm, and another press of the mode button gets us back to the standard timekeeping mode. Now you can shuffle between the uh, uh, indications on the digital subdials by pressing the forward button. So currently you see that my subdial is showing the uh, time. So it's 12 o'clock, 18 minutes and 30, 40 seconds, and the day is Tuesday. By pressing the forward button, I engage the date of mode. So again, we have the Tuesday over here, seconds counting over here, but instead of the uh, time, we have the date. So it's 23rd of March. So pressing the forward button, we'll scroll through those options. Let me show you how to set the time and date on this watch. So basically, amongst time and date, there's the elimination duration. So let's get started. From the standard timekeeping mode, press and hold the adjust button until the upper digital display starts to flash, indicating our time zone. So first in a row of settings is, as I've said, setting my time zone. Currently it's blinking Paris, but you can increase or, sorry, uh, shuffle between the time zones by pressing the reverse or forward button. So lower right one and the upper right button. I'm going to get it back to Paris since that is my time zone. Next press of the mode button gets us to daylight saving time option. Is it on or off? Currently you see over here blinking off, but I can switch it by pressing the forward button and it will uh, indicate on. And also over here you have the DST turned on. I'm gonna leave it at off by pressing the forward button once again. Pressing the mode button gets us to setting the 12 or 24 hour time format. It's indicated over here. We see the 24 blinking. By pressing the forward button, I'm shuffling between 12 or 24 hour time format. Once I'm done with that, simply pressing the mode button gets us to uh, setting the seconds value. And you, and you can see uh, the seconds are blinking over here. Now, you cannot set the exact value of seconds, but what you can do is reset that value by pressing the forward button. Pressing the mode button once again, I'm uh, moving on to setting the hour value and as you can see the hours are currently blinking so pressing the reverse or forward button i can increase or decrease the value of hours once i've done with that pressing the mode button i'm moving on to the minute settings now the procedure is exactly the same as uh, for the hours so pressing the reverse or forward button you will increase or decrease the value of minutes once you're done with that, pressing the mode button moves us to setting the year value. And you can see that the uh, year 2021 is blinking over here. So to uh, increase or decrease the value, again, press the forward button or reverse button to shuffle between the values. So pressing the reverse or forward button increases or decreases the value of years. Procedure is exactly the same for uh, when I press the mode button to shuffle to a month value. So month value will be increased or decreased by pressing the forward or reverse button. Pressing the mode button once again, we get to the setting the uh, um, day value. So currently it's 23rd of March. Pressing the forward button or reverse button, you will get to uh, exact value that you want. So. Uh, like, let me get that back to you again. So setting the hours, the minutes, year value, month and day value is done uh, uh, s uh, same. So pressing the reverse or forward button, you can shuffle between the values up and down to get to the value you want. So once you set our date, pressing the uh, mode button once again, we get to the illumination duration. Uh, currently, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, from the hour hand, but you have the LT1 flashing on the upper digital display. 
which means when I press the illumination button to see uh, what's the time using the LED that's installed over here, that will uh, uh, light up the, the, the watch display. Uh, LT1 stands for uh, duration of that illumination for one and a half seconds. When I press the forward button, it shuffles to LT3, indicating that the light will stay on for three seconds. I'm going to press the forward button once again, and I'm going to leave my illumination duration for one and a half seconds. When I press the uh, mode button once again, I'm back to the beginning of setting the time and date. And uh, basically, we have ran through the cycle of setting the watch. And uh, when I want to implement all of those settings that I previously did, simply press the adjust button once. The watch will implement all of those settings and it will get you back to the standard timekeeping mode. How to use the countdown timer or the countdown timer mode on the GA110? From the standard timekeeping mode, press the mode button once, twice, and we enter the countdown timer mode. So over here you have your start times, that's the hour and the minutes, the minutes value. So let's uh, configure our uh, 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 countdown timer mode. Press and hold the adjust button until you hear the beep. And there it is. So currently the hours are flashing. I'm going to press the reverse or forward button to set my hour value. I'm going to leave my hours at zero. Uh, to uh, set the minutes value, I'm going to press the mode button and we enter the setting of the minutes value. Pressing the reverse or forward button will get us to the uh, digit digits that we want. I'm going to say uh, 10 minutes for this watch. Pressing the mode button once again will get us to the option of auto repeat on or off. Now uh, you can out toggle between the auto repeat on or off by pressing the uh, uh, forward button over here. This is indicated that the auto repeat is on. And when I press the forward button once again, uh, this uh, marker over here indicates that the auto repeat is off. To implement all of those settings, simply press the adjust button. And now we have set our time to be counted down. To engage our uh, countdown timer, press the forward button. And we have our uh, uh, countdown timer engaged. To pause it or stop it, press the forward button once again. To continue again, pause it again. And to reset the value, simply press the uh, adjust button. Those would be the basics of a countdown timer mode on this watch. World time mode on the GA110. The world time uh, digitally displays the current time in one of the 48 cities or 29 time zones around the world. Now, um, let's get to the world time mode, pressing the from the standard timekeeping mode by pressing the mode button once, twice, three times, and we are in the world time mode. Over here is your time zone that's, the, that, that's um, being, being displayed, so the time for that time, time zone is being displayed over here. Now you can use the uh, forward uh, button to scroll through those time zones. Let me get that. So you have over here, shifting through your time zones. Let's say I want to get to Tokyo. Remember that I'm pressing the forward button. Oh, there it is. It, well, never mind. It's the Adelaide time. So we see it's uh, 8 o'clock, almost 9 o'clock at night. And uh, the lower digital display will show the time in the uh, currently selected world time mode. A PM indicator will also be displayed over here. And uh, so in the lower digital display between the hours of noon and the midnight. So um, you can press the adjust button over here to see the date in that uh, Adelaide uh, time zone. So pressing the, simply pressing the button, we see that it's 23rd day of uh, March, also over there. Uh, you can also toggle uh, uh, city code time between the standard uh, time and the daylight uh, saving time mode. So in the world time mode, press the, uh, so you have your over time zone. And now you, uh, you press the and hold the adjust button. 
and you have your DST turned on. So pressing the adjust button once again and holding it, you will turn the uh, daylight saving time mode in the Adelaide city code uh, off. So those would be the basics of the uh, world time mode. There's the also option, also, oh, I forgot to say there's the option to swap your uh, home city and your world time city. So in the world time mode, uh, hold the uh, hold the um, upper left and the upper right button at the same time until the watch beeps. Now I'm not going to do that, but what you get is the uh, Adelaide time will become my uh, standard timekeeping mode, so it's my home city, and our secondary time zone will become my uh, the time from the standard timekeeping mode. So basically now my primary time zone is Paris and my world time is Adelaide, but to shift between those two, I'm, uh, the procedure is for you to uh, press and hold the adjust and the reverse button at the same time until the watch beeps. So this is the cool feature for frequent flyers between A to B. And with that we have uh, uh, basically explained all of the modes from the world timekeeping mode. Alarm mode on the G-Shock GA110. First of all, let's get to the alarm mode. So from the standard timekeeping mode, pressing the mode button once, twice, three times, four times and we enter the alarm mode. Now you have your uh, four uh, standard alarms, you have your snooze alarm and you have your hourly time signal. So to shuffle between the, uh, those alarms I'm going to press the forward button and over here you have your uh, alarm number indicated. It says currently alarm number one. I believe you can see it by pressing the forward button. I'm shuffling between two alarm number two, three, four, snooze alarm and the hourly time signal. Also all of those alarms uh, are indicated over here. Currently all of the alarms and the hourly time signal is turned off. Uh, so pre pressing the adjust button will activate the alarm and it will be indicated over here saying on and also over here inscribed on the upper digital display it will say ALM. So basically pressing the adjust button on the alarm, so let's say alarm number one, will uh, turn on or off that specific alarm. So let's get to alarm number three, pressing the alarm number, uh, adjust button on the alarm number three will turn on or off that specific alarm and that specific time on the that alarm. Now let's say I want to set the value of my alarm number three, I'm going to press and hold the adjust button until I hear the beep and you have your hours flash. Now I'm in the position of setting the hour value of my alarm by pressing the reverse or forward button. I can increase or decrease the value of the alarm. I'm going to get it back to zero since this is a factory watch. Since I've set my hour value, I'm going to press the mode button and the flashing uh, uh, continues to a minutes value. Pressing the, the um, reverse or forward button will get the same thing uh, to set uh, the exact value, uh, numerical value of your alarm. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to simply press the adjust button and my alarm will be automatically turned on. To turn it off, simply press the adjust button and the alarm will be turned off. Let's get to the snooze alarm. You get the picture of what the snooze alarm is. So. Again, pressing the adjust button over here will turn on the snooze alarm and you have it indicated over here. It says snooze and the alarm is also turned on. Pressing the adjust button once again will turn it off. Uh, the procedure is the same for the hourly time signal over here. When I press the adjust button, the hourly time signal will be uh, turned on and it will be indicated over here. Pressing the adjust button once again my hourly time signal is turned off and as you can see all of my alarms including the snooze alarm are turned off. Those will be the basics of the uh, alarm mode on and the hourly time signal on this watch. Auto light feature. The auto light feature is a basically a feature when the watch uh, illuminates the watch face or the watch dial when you flick your wrist to see what's the time. So. Besides manually turning on the light by pressing the reverse button, there's the option for you to uh, engage the auto light switch. 
To turn on or off the auto light switch in the standard timekeeping mode, uh, currently it's turned off, so to turn it on, simply press and hold the reverse button for about 3 seconds and the auto light will be uh, inscribed over here on the lower digital display and it, that indicates the auto light is turned on. To turn it off, simply press and hold the same button for about 3 seconds and it will vanish. So currently it's turned off. Uh, those will be the basics of the auto light switch on the G-Shock GA110. Hand home position correction. The speed, hour and minute hand of the watch can be thrown off by exposure to strong magnetism or impact. Uh, the watch is designed to correct the speed, hour and minute hand manually. So uh, let's see how to uh, correct those hands if the analog time is not corresponding to our uh, digital time over here. So in the standard timekeeping mode, hold, about, hold uh, the uh, forward button for about 3 seconds until sub flashes in the lower digital display. So let's go, pressing and holding it, and we have the sub uh, indicated over here and the age set in the upper digital display. Now you have to check first in a row of settings is uh, setting or checking the position of the speed hand over here. This is the speed hand, let me zoom in for you. So this is the speed hand over here. And uh, the correct position of the speed hand is when it's pointed at 50 or, uh, well, the standard nine o'clock position. If it's not, use the uh, forward button over here to engage it or uh, to rotate the hand uh, clockwise until you uh, get back to the 50 exactly. So. Uh, speed hand on my watch is currently set at the 50 so i'm pretty happy with that but if it was not i would press the forward button rotate it clockwise until i get it back to the 50 over there so once i've set my uh, speed hand i'm gonna get back to uh, setting my hour and minute value and next step is engaged by pressing the mode button so Currently, what is the watch doing? It's the aligning uh, the uh, watch hands at exactly at 12 o'clock. Now, if the uh, watch hands are not uh, aligned exactly at 12 o'clock, and mine are, well, slightly not, but let me get that. Uh, by pressing the reverse or forward button, you can move those hands uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. So I believe my hand is slightly... Uh, and now there it is. So I press the forward button and set my hand exactly at 12 o'clock. I believe my alignment is now correct, exactly at 12 o'clock. And uh, once I've set my uh, hands in the correct way and the way I want them to, uh, I'm gonna simply press the adjust button once and uh, let's see uh, if my uh, digital time corresponds to my analog Time. So it is 12.45, 12, and which means that my hands are uh, positioned correctly. The stopwatch mode on the GA110. First of all, let's enter the stopwatch mode, and that is done simply by pressing the mode button from the standard timekeeping mode. And briefly over here, you had the STW, which indicates that we are in the stopwatch mode. Now you can use the stopwatch mode to measure the elapsed time, lap times, and split time. If you specify a distance value, the stopwatch also uh, will calculate and display speeds. The digital display range of the stopwatch is 99 hours, 59 minutes, 59.99 seconds, and the stopwatch continues to run until you stop it. If it reaches the uh, above limit, it will restart the time measurement from zero. The stopwatch operation continues even if you exit the stopwatch mode. Now let's uh, see how the stopwatch mode functions. Uh, let me get through the specified measurements so you can uh, see how to measure each uh, value. Let's, uh, let me show you how to measure the elapsed time. First of all, to start this, uh, the measurement, press the forward button. Pressing the same button, it will stop it, resume it, stop it, and the adjust button will reset that value. How to measure the lap time, press the uh, forward button over here to, uh, this, uh, the, uh, to engage the lap measurement.
press the adjust button this is the lap number lap number one this is the time pressing the adjust button will show you the lap number two pressing the uh, forward button will uh, stop it and adjust button will also reset that value to uh, enter the split time measurement, first of all, you will have to shuffle uh, using the adjust button to between split time and the lap time over here. So we will set it to split. Now, to measure this split time, we will start, start it by pressing the forward button. Pressing the adjust button will split the time. Plus, pressing the same button will do the split release. Forward button will stop it and adjust button will also reset the value. How to use the speed measurement or the speed indicator over here. Uh, also, uh, first of all, you have to, uh, st in the stopwatch mode, you have to uh, preset the or specify a distance value. To do that, you have your watch in the stopwatch mode. Press and hold the adjust button over here. And the lower part of the digi digital subdial will start to flash. And over here, you have a distance indicated on the upper digital display. Currently, it's set to 1. Now, that can be miles or kilo kilometers. So uh, if you put your value in miles, you will, re you will read out at the miles per hour. If you indicate at the, uh, if you uh, refer your measure, your distance to the kilometers, the readout value from the watch will be in the kilometers per hour. So let's say I wanna uh, adjust the value. I will do that by pressing the reverse or forward button to increase in increments of one. Once I'm done, simply pressing the adjust button will get me back to the stopwatch mode. Now, uh, in, uh, how to indicate or how to see the uh, speed indication over here. Um, in, the, uh, um, in the stopwatch mode, I'm going to start the stopwatch. And when a lapse time measurement operation is being performed in the uh, stopwatch mode, the watch will indicate a speed value, which is calculated um, based on the... Uh, the distance you specified in the elapsed time. The distance value is indicated as, as I'm going to show you. So the speed hand over here indicates the value up to 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, let's say I'm going to do a readout of the 100 kilometers per hour. A thousand indicator over here is pointed uh, at uh, if the speed is above the value of 1000. So it's, it exceeds the value of 1000. The speed hand indicates speed values less than 100. That's this hand over here. Uh, only even numbered values are indicated. Speed can be uh, indicated from uh, uh, 0 to uh, 1998, so 1998 kilometers per hour. Over is indicated by the speed hand when the speed exceeds 1998, so 1998 kilometers or uh, uh, miles per hour. Now I'm going to show you a readout on this uh, speed measurement. So we have the increment over here of 10 seconds and 330 uh, thousandths of a second. So uh, let's measure the, uh, the speed or let's just you, uh, re read out the speed from the watch. Over here we have the above 1000 indicator indicated over here, which means that our speed is uh, above 1000. So it's 1000. The upper a digital display shows in 100 so uh, indicates so we have 100 200 300 4 500 600 700 i believe this is the 700 so 1700 now to uh to see the speed hand it indicates um 40 40 42 let's say so you have 1742 that's our speed so that's the way to read out the speed using the stopwatch mode and the distance uh, we have previously put in our watch. I press the adjust button to reset that value. That would be the basics of a stopwatch mode on this watch. And uh, basically we have run through the detailed how-to tutorial video on the G-Shock GA110. So if you are into watch-related content, please subscribe. So thank you.